What's up, Bo? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Nothing, bandana. <laughs> How are you today? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just ready to get this thing going and forget about the week, man. Dude, let's do it. Let's 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 get to building a bar because I got a lot to cover tonight. I'm so excited about this episode. Are you ready? Yeah, man. Let's do it. What are you bringing to the table tonight? All right. So I'm super excited about this episode. This is episode five. And I thought it's about time that we bring a single barrel into our bar. And so after much deliberation and thinking about what single barrel that I would want to bring, I finally landed on Four Roses single barrel. Um, and it was a, it was a good fight. I had actually thought about doing several others, but, but in in the end, I kind of landed on this, um, single barrel. Wow. I will drink to that. I'll drink to that too. All right. So let's jump right into it with the first question. And I've mixed it up here tonight. Why should this be on anybody's bar? All right. So. The reason this should be on somebody's bar is because if you're trying to be, if you're trying to to build a versatile bar, if you're trying to to actually have a bar that kind of is is has a variety to it, you're gonna want things like bottled and bond bourbons. You're gonna want things like you know Tennessee whiskeys, and and later on we're gonna add things like gins and stuff like that. But if you're wanting to be serious about your collecting, then you're gonna want to get into to single barrels. And so because of that, I think, I think four roses, the reason I chose four roses is I think it has a leg up on most other distilleries. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's why I I think the versatility of it being a single barrel is what we, what we're looking for. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned that this is a single barrel. Mm-hmm. What is the difference in a single barrel and a regular everyday bourbon? All right. So we've probably talked about this before, but if not, if we have, I'm going to recap just a little bit. So when you drink a bourbon, when you go out and get your Jim Beam white label, or you get your, you know, Evan Williams black label or your Jack Daniels uh, old number seven, what you're getting is a blend. So not a blend of different whiskeys, but a blend of different bourbons. And so in order for those companies to to maintain consistency all across the board, like from here to, um, you know, uh, California to New York to Oregon to Florida, they have to blend thousands and thousands of barrels. And so what that does for the company is it allows no matter where that bottle is sold, it's going to taste the same. So if you're a fan of Four Roses, if you're a fan of Evan Williams, if you're a fan of Jack Daniels, when you go to Florida and buy that bottle, you you know you're going to get the same quality, right? Mm -hmm. And so in the 80s, this trend popped up about single barrels. And and some people say Elmer T. Lee is the father of single barrels. Some say Booker No is the father of single barrels. But basically what happened is People that were inside the Rick houses like Booker No, like Elmer T. Lee, these guys knew where these specific in the Rick houses, where these specific barrels were. They called them honey barrels. They knew where these barrels were that tasted completely different than the other product. And so their stories of Booker No used to go in and pull out these honey barrels and bottle them up and give them, give them out as gifts and, you know, as friends at Christmas and stuff. And, and they tasted so much different and so much better than the, the kind of blended product. And so out of that was born the single barrel movement. And so it basically is what it, what it says. It's a single barrel. So instead of getting a bottle of white label Jim Beam or or yellow label four roses, that's a blend of everything. You're getting a product that comes from one barrel and one barrel only. And the, the, the upside to that is every barrel tastes different. So you can take 
you know, you can take a, a, a run off the still that it's enough to fill, say, 20 barrels. It's the same distillate that goes in 20 different barrels, and you're going to get 20 different flavors out of those single barrels. Right. And so the upside to that is when you find a barrel, when, when these companies find these barrels that are just miles above the rest in flavor or just completely different characteristic, that's what you want in a single barrel. You don't want the single barrel to taste just like, you know, you don't want this to taste just like the the yellow label. You want it to taste different. You want it to have different characteristics. And so that's what's important about a single barrel. And so just to kind of recap, if if you are really bourbon and, and whiskey, you know, really kind of falls into one of three categories. Either it's a blended bourbon, like we talked about. It's a small batch, which means it's just a much smaller batch of barrels. So like, for instance, maybe four roses a regular blend for them might be a thousand barrels. A small batch for them might be a hundred barrels and a single bar- barrel for them is one barrel. And so you're going to get different characteristics out of that. If that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. I, I guess I've actually never really known that, that it is a single, single barrel in itself. All right. So out of everything like out of all the different single barrels, why should we start with Four Roses? Single? The reason I I chose Four Roses is they do things a little bit, but a little not. I don't that mean a little bit better. They do things a little bit differently, and so what I like about them is I, I want to say they give you a little more bang for your buck. And what I mean by that is Four Roses has the opportunity. And they, they run 10 different recipes. And, and how they do that is they have two different mash bills and they run five different yeast strands. And so you can mix and match those to make 10 different recipes. And so they literally could, could have unlimited amount of different characteristics and flavor based off of the fact that they – they do it this way. Um, and so they're very upfront about, you know, you can get on their website and see their mash bills. You can get on their website, see their, their yeast strains. But, but that's why I chose them is because I think they have some versatility that a lot of other companies don't have. So that's why I chose um, this single barrel um, to start with. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm hooked. So do they use the different recipes for the single barrel or is it one consistent thing? What are we working with here? So the answer to that question is yes and no. The company itself puts out this product, this single barrel. And so this one will always be, let's call this your basic single barrel just for just for terminology, this is your basic single barrel that you will get from Four Roses. And if you go to Kroger or if you go to your liquor store, or if you go to wherever you go and you get the basic single barrel from Four Roses, it's always going to be recipe number one, which is um, the high rye bourbon. It's We'll talk about this in a minute, but it's mash bill B and it's the strain V is what they call it. And that's their their basic fruity strain. So all of these single barrels, the basic single barrels are going to be recipe uh, mash bill B with strain V, which is their fruity. Um, but they do have they do have other. I, I don't know if higher end is the right word, but they do have other single barrels and, and it's barrel strength. And so you can find those out in the wild and. And they have single barrels from every single recipe that they have. And, and those are single, those are barrel strength. So, you know, the, those, by the way, this comes in at 100 proof. The others will be whatever, you know, the, the barrel strength is, but you can find those in, in others. But, but if you're more than likely, if you go to like your liquor store, you're going to find, find this one before you, you'll you find those other ones. And I mean, uh, you know, other other companies, other liquor stores can can go in and do barrel picks. And when they do that, they could pick different recipes. But but the one that the company is going to put out and the one you're going to see most in the wild is 
is this one, this basic single barrel. Do you think that they use recipe B and yeast strain V for an abbreviation for Bavarian or Bovarian? <laughs> I think that's exactly what that's exactly what they were thinking. That, okay, I wanted to just clarify and kind yeah. of get that. So you mentioned um, V strain, and and this is this being their fruity strain, mm -hmm. right? So what other strains do they have? All right, so I'm gonna have to glance at my notes, but basically they have five strains. The V strain, like I said, is their is their fruity strain, and so you think light fruit like pears and you know that that light fruitiness. Mm, okay. Um, they have strain K, which is their spicy strain. They have strain O, which is their rich fruity strain. So think about deeper, darker fruits. You know, um, when I think of like dark fruits, I think of almost like candied fruits or, you know, like cherries and, you know, dark fruits. So think of, think of it that way. So that there's it's two kind of fruity ones, but one's a light fruity one. Um, they have... Um, uh, strain Q, which is their floral yeast. Think of like rose petals and things like that. Oh and then God. their F strain is their herbal. So um, enough of a difference that you, you know, you, you could take the same mash bill, which they do and add different strains to it and get completely different products. I, hey, real quick in 30 seconds or less, because this is a question that I have that's not on our traditional questions do they grow their own yeast meaning do they do they set up a yeast starter and capture wild yeast to make these that's a good question i don't i'm i'm assuming that whenever they started this they've never let it die so i don't know i would have to do some research to find out where they got their yeast strains but i'm sure many 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 years ago is where they got them and they just haven't let them die yet so that's awesome dude Okay, so we got the yeast strains, right? Mm -hmm. We've got the different yeast strains. So let's talk a little bit about enlighten us on what the mash bills are. Like All right, so as we talked about, they have two ma two main mash bills. The mash bill B, they call it the high rye mash bill, and so it's basically sixty percent corn, thirty five percent rye, and five percent malted barley. So that that is a pretty pretty high rye content um and so the other mash bill they have is mash bill e and they call it the bright grain mash bill and that's 75 percent corn 20 percent rye five percent malted barley so the uh, the other one is very corn heavy um you know for we talked in an earlier episode about you know corn and what it does it kind of mellows out and so um, but yeah, the, this one in this single barrel. So as we talked before, it's strain B or mass bill B strain B. So it's a very high rye and very fruity strain. So, so those two mix is what produces the single barrels that, that you're going to get there. So that would almost be, and, and, and we'll get to the taste test, you know, the taste profile later on, but that seems to me that they paired that as almost like a, like a sweet and spicy type of. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. All right. So what is going on with the label? Like, you know, and, and, and again, not the label itself, but the deeper meaning of the label, who was it named after or what was it named after? So a few years ago, I was fortunate enough to interview one of the greatest brand ambassadors that ever walked the planet um, and he happened to be the brand ambassador for Four Roses. Um, he passed away shortly after we got to interview him, but he wow. talked about how Four Roses got its name. So instead of me telling you, I'm going to play a clip here that has him explaining it. So if if you don't mind, we're going to go off script a little bit and I'm going to show a clip in, of him explaining it. Is that cool with you? That's awesome. All right. Here it is. Four Roses came about when Paul Jones Jr. fell in love with the Southern Bell and Sent a proposal to her, said he was going to ask her to marry him or something. And she said if she accepted, she would wear a corsage of four red roses on her uh, dark colored dress to the upcoming ball. So when he showed up that night, there she was with a corsage of four red roses on. So we think he named his whiskey in honor of that event and later transferred the passion he had for the beautiful bell and how he made his whiskey. 
So that was a uh, clip from a, a film that I did with Bourbon Sasquatch, which is a, a bourbon production company that I work with. Yeah. Uh, called Blending is Trending. And it's actually very good. Boy. Do it. Very good, by the way. Thank you. So it basically tells a story of how blending almost destroyed Four Roses, but because of great leadership and great innovation, they've come back and now they're one of the the legacy brands, one of the top brands in, in bourbon. So it's kind of a almost like a rocky story of how they almost went down, but they, they came back and, and now they're on top of their game. So it's it's a really cool story, but but it was it was awesome to get to interview um Al Young on that occasion. So you mentioned the Rocky thing. Did they fight Russians and stuff like that? I mean, what? Yeah, All, I think, they fought this guy with a with a goat like a, a, a mohawk, and okay. they called him Clubber something. Would it? Would he or would he not pity the fool? Yeah, he would. Okay. okay. Yeah. He now pity the fool. that is the only real question I had. <laughs> Does this bottle have any other expressions other than pity the fool? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this this has basically four expressions. You're going to have your Four Roses yellow label, which is um, it's 80 proof. And what's interesting about that is that uses all 10 recipes. So when they blend those barrels, this is their flagship product. So as we talked earlier, this is the one that they mix thousands of barrels. Mm-hmm. So they use all of the the recipes to make their blend of their yellow label. Um, so that's their flagship product. Um, they have four roses, small batch, which is 90 proof. And it uses four of the 10 mash bills and it's the same four all the time. So they only pick barrels that, that are of those four um, recipes. And so it's, it's uh, 90 proof and it's small batch. So as we talked earlier, that just means it's far less amount of barrels that make up a batch than, than their flagship product. Mm-hmm. They have a four roses, small batch select, and that's 104 proof. And it uses six of the recipes um, in their blending. And then there's this, the, the single barrel version. And, and they do have, um, they do have a limited edition line. So like, like I mentioned, out of the single barrel, um, they do have a extended limited edition line that, that contains the other barrel, you know, the other um, single barrels. And then as far as like the small batch, they have like small batch select or not the, they have like a limited edition small batch and they have like the distillers select and that, you know, they have those kind of things, but, but those are the main four products out of the four roses line, if that makes sense. Absolutely. All right. Um, so what would someone expect to pay for this bottle? Because and I, I really like this question because I'm curious. You and I um, had done some time talking offline about different single barrels and the prices we pay and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So now that you've landed on this, which I will go out and get, what, um, what's, a, what's, a, what's the price? So another, another reason that I chose this is because when – Traditionally, for for people that are new into this bourbon arena and and bourbon is their new hobby for for new folks, single barrels are pretty expensive. So when you think of, I mean, name your favorite brand when you go to their single barrels and you start getting to their higher end um, products, the price goes up significantly. The difference is for this, you're looking at about so. Booze app puts this at a MSRP of $45. A fair price is 60 ish dollars. Now, the fair price simply means like there's going to be some markup, and that's that's a fair price to pay. But I'll tell you this I bought this at my local Kroger. I do a lot of shopping at the local Kroger, and they're not an endorsement or anything, but they had it on sale, and I paid $35 for this bottle. So you can get this bottle relatively cheap and the, the reason i chose that is because even if i paid 60 dollars for this bottle that's not a bad price for a a, a single barrel that i'm going to get that unique flavor and i do want to point out once again that the reason the reason i i wanted to add this single barrel and the reason you should have a single barrel is 
this is a this is a flavor profile that's going to be it's similar to other single barrels, but you're never going to get this. You're never going to get that profile again. You're never going to get that exact flavor again. Mm. And 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 to 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 kind of in, enhance that statement a little bit. There's a distillery right down the street from me that my good buddy Royce Neely owns. And and the reason I, I didn't put his on there is because he, outside of Kentucky, you can't get his bourbon. Um, I mean, you could have it shipped to you, but you're just not going to find it out in the wild. But he had this he had this bottle several years ago, three or four years ago, and and he names his single barrel bottles, you know, for something that, you know, that kind of so he had this bottle called uh marshmallow black belt i knew exactly where you were going to this day that was my favorite bottle and here's the thing that that single barrel was my favorite and everybody that knows me knows that 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 was my favorite bottle that i ever had and the thing is i've had 20 or 30 other bottles of his bourbon and he only he only does single barrels out of his distillery. So everything that you get out of his distillery is a single barrel, but I've never tasted anything from his distillery that tasted like marshmallow black belt. And I mean, it's the same process. It's the same mash bill. It's the same barrels. It's the same Rick house. Everything's the same personality barrel, man, that barrel was special. And, and so, you know, I just wanted to reinforce that that's why you want single barrels on your bar because you know, it might be a it might be a four roses, or it might be a Jim Beam single barrel, or it might be a Evan Williams single barrel, but those are going to taste significantly different than the the Jim Beam product or the Four Roses product. It's going to taste significantly different, and you're going to want to have that variety on there, and it, you're going to want to have something on your bar that somebody can come over to your house, taste it, and then you can say you're never going to taste that again. You're never going to taste that exact thing again. That is something. Yep, absolutely. So, now, how hard would this bottle be to find? This bottle is not hard at all to find. I've never. I don't think I've ever been to a liquor store where I didn't see it. So, because it's you know because Four Roses is one of the big legacy brands, um, you're gonna you're gonna find that. And 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 again, like I said, Four Roses is the one that puts this out. It's not like these are store pick single barrels where, you know, a. a a liquor store or a di- distribution company, they come in and they, they pick the barrel themselves. This is issued by four roses. So it's going to be widely distributed. So you should be able to find it. I mean, I've never been to a liquor store in Tennessee or Mississippi or Kentucky that I didn't see it. So this being a single barrel, then I were never going to taste anything like this again. What should the drinker, of this bottle see this is tricky and i never really thought about this until i listened to you talk so what should these people that break into your house at night and drink out of your bottle right the recipe for this like we said earlier is that high rye it is that fruity yeast and so even though it's going to taste different than than say that straight recipe you are going to get a different variation and when i like off the nose of this, like I immediately get some light fruit. I mean, I, I can almost smell like, I mean, I, I don't know if I could put my finger on it, but like almost like a, a pear or a plum or something like that. It's very fruity to me. And then when I taste it, because we didn't really talk about this, but we will in a few weeks when I introduce a rye, but, but high rye, is as a has a spice to it it's a it's a got a kick to it so because it's a high rye bourbon i do right off the front palate i get like a a spice to it like a it's a fruit it's a almost like a spice cider or something because you have that fruitiness and you have that spice it's a it's a very spicy fruity but it's a very full-bodied product so you know it's it's full bite it's got like you know it's but it's smooth it's it's a very spicy fruity smooth and then very mid palate is when that fruitiness like kicks in for me and i i almost taste things like cherries and 
So I, I get that mid palate, and then the finish is what gets me. The finish is really long, and I don't, we never really talked about this for for those who are kind of new to this bourbon, but the finish on this product is very long, and and the fruitiness for me just lingers for for a while. Um, and so the difference in the, you know, what we're talking about the finishes, if, if, when, if it goes away, if, if when you drink this and, and it goes away really quick, it's a, you know, it's a quick short finish, but if it lingers for a while, it's a long finish. And I like, I like bourbons and whiskeys that have a, a long finish because when I'm done drinking, if I can you sit can- there and, and yeah, taste it for another 10 or 15 minutes, even, I mean, that's awesome. So so that's what that's what I'm tasting, and but but like I said, I know we say a lot on this show, like what should you be tasting, and and that's probably we shouldn't say that, and and what this that's what I'm tasting, and because there's no right or wrong answer. I mean, I might taste cherries and plums, and you might taste, you know, whatever you know, baking spices or, or whatnot. But like, I, for instance, I was at a distillery today, tasting a bourbon, and immediately when it hit my lips. I tasted peppermint, but the person I was drinking with, the person I was tasting with, immediately she tasted bubble gum. And so we tasted together and she said, man, I taste bubble gum. And I said, man, I taste peppermint. Like it literally tasted like somebody had dropped a peppermint in that bourbon. And that's, and I don't, neither one of us were wrong. I mean, so, so anyway, I said all that to say that. Yeah. But one thing you didn't cover is that you were drinking peppermint whiskey and she was drinking bubble bubblegum whiskey so to to be fair well to be fair i had a peppermint in my mouth <laughs> and she was chewing bubblegum so. right correct yeah yeah so yeah but no nah, but, but yeah so that's it so well okay so should we could we both agree that four roses single barrel is something that you should have on your bar i agree 100 percent I'll drink to that. I'll drink to that. So, thank you for enlightening us on the Four Roses Single Barrel. And uh, I look forward to our next episodes. Same bat time. Same bat channel. Same bat channel. And I love you, brother. And love you. What was your name at the beginning of this? bandana bandana (laughs) oh my gosh how did you forget that (laughs) because i've been drinking a lot of single barrel (laughs) golly that's oh my gosh all right well i love you bandana love you oh my gosh i love you (laughs) i'll see you later if you like what you heard check us out on these social media platforms Just search for My Journey Through the American Spirits.